part to foul at the end of the game. Let's frame this, this problem here. In the 2005 Conference USA Basketball Tournament, Memphis tra trailed Louisville by two points. At the buzzer, Memphis's Darius Washington attempted a three-pointer. He missed but was fouled and went to the line for three free throws. Each free throw made is worth one point. Was it smart to foul? So question one is going to ask you, what are the ways that this could have turned out? So I want you to go through and just literally list all the ways. Use check marks for a make and X's for a miss and figure out how many different ways could this have gone? Here's what I got. Did I repeat? No. So here's a three make. Well, help help me because I, I said I said do this in a structured fashion. I was literally copying from my paper and I think I, m I messed up three times. So make 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 miss. So then we go three makes. Then there's the two makes, right? So you two makes and a miss. Make miss make miss make make. And then we'd have the situation where they'd miss twice. So miss so make miss 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 make miss 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 make. And then obviously the last one would be miss miss miss. Wait, wait, wait. No, that's was that more or less than you thought? I got seven. I got seven. seven. What are you missing? I missed eight. I missed eight. I missed eight. Miss eight. Is there a way to figure this out? Like how many there should be? Yes. Two times two. Two times two times two. How many shots are there? How do we know that? Let's think about this way. So there's three shots. How many different outcomes are there per shot? Two. Two outcomes here, two outcomes here, two outcomes here. But any outcome could go with any of the other outcomes. Two to the third power. Those, those um, exponents are going to be really, really important today. We're going to be talking about, first of all, how do we figure out how many factors we're supposed to have? And second of all, what goes in there? So let's complicate this a little bit. Maybe not complicate. If Darius Washington is a 72% free throw shooter, find the probability that Memphis will win, lose, or go to overtime. When you have found the probabilities, oh, put I'm them in table three. I really had eight. I can't. <laughs> okay. Okay. This from the guy that was copying off the paper and had to erase three times. Okay. So don't feel bad. Down by two points. That's important to the scenario. They're down by two points. So to win, what would that mean? They have to make all three. Have to make all three. To lose, make one or zero. To tie. Make two. How does that look? It's going to be a variation on this. <laughs> Think about it for a second with your group. Think about it in terms of the shots. When he steps up to the free throw line in that first shot, he goes up. What's the probability that he makes? Oh, 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 it's going to be 0. 0.72 times. Um, but then. He makes, and then he makes three separate events. But we have event times event times event. But we're shaping what we want it to be, right? We want that to be the case where we win. So we make, 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 so we win. That's the mathematics of it. So think about, think about that kind of, ex not extrapolate, I hate to use that word to this, but draw that out but in these other two scenarios. What's it going to mean? I think one of the best things I can do for you is to help to teach you some structured thinking. I am the type of person that likes to put categories on things, meaning if I can, if I can figure out, oh, this is a type of, how many ways are there to do that type of thing and, and kind of separate them like that. And what I mean by that is, what are the ways for there to lose? So imagine you're down by two. What's one way that they could lose? It could be three misses, right? I'm going to put that in math separate. What would the mathematics behind three misses look like? I like to think about it in terms of these little, like, you know, bins kind of thing. Three shots. So to miss would mean, so to miss would be 0.28 times 0.28 times 0.28. And what does that equal? Zero point zero two one. Zero point zero. I go two two. The other way to lose would be in general what? Only make one. Only make one. 
So one make, two miss. If I look up at my list, what are the ways to have one make, two miss? Well, here's a one make, here's a one make, here's a one make. So I know there's three ways to do it. To have that bins mentality, right? So to have these little like, and I hate to use the word bins because we're going to talk about bins here in a minute, but these three little, the three shots would be the one make times a miss times a miss. But that .72 could be the second one is hit or the third one is hit. But at the end of the day, I have a number here, .056 times three ways would be equal to .169. That's the ways I could lose. What would it mean to go into overtime? Two makes and one miss. Mathematically speaking, if I think about it in terms of the three shots, the three events, I'd have 0 0.72 times 0 0.72 times 0.28. But really, where do the two makes have to come? They could come first and second. They could come first and third. They could have come second and third. So it's whatever this is times three ways. There's another way to notate this in mathematics. And if you're familiar, if you had, I think I had everybody here in class last year. Freshman. Madison. Actually, no, you had me last year for the first time. For the first time, yes. There's a, there's a way to notate this using combinatorics. NCR, remember that from last year? Briefly. So there's, we're going to do an NCK in statistics. But what this NCK notates is my N is my total shots. And K is going to be my makes. It's my favorable event. And it's going to be times p, which is the probability of my favorable event, to the k power, meaning how many I want to make. This is going to make, I'm going to, we're, going to, we're going to tie it together here in just a minute. And because it's probability, if p is my probability of making, what's my other probability? Well, it's 1 minus p. So in this case, the probability of the miss. to the n minus k power. What is, what is now hold, just wait a minute. You're going to see all this come together in just a second. What is the n? n is the number of shots, the total number of shots. And then k is the make. k is the number of makes. <coughs> I stepped out to the side here and showed you this. Now I'm going to put it together in a formula down here using the two makes and one miss. You ready? How many total shots did I take? Three, I like to say C as this is not this is not official off the record, right? Choose. You had three shots. You need to choose to make how many of them? Two. two. So three C two is another way to say that would be take three things, combine them two at a time. Take three things, choose two of them to be your favorable event. The rest of the mathematics for this would look like this. 0.72 to the second power. The remainder of the mathematics. Wait, so 3C2 is equal to 0.33 squared or times? Times. Or times, okay. Squared. So this is multiplied. What is 3C2 doing? What a great question. What a great question. I want you to pull out your TI calculator. Go to the math menu. Go to the PRB. PROB and do 3C2. Yeah. Math PROB, go to the NCR, put in 3C2. What do you get? 
It's a function of the math menu. Oh. Try now. Uh, so, so think about this for a second. What just happened was we listed out all the probabilities, all the possibilities, and I just showed you a shortcut using NCR on your calculator. There is a formula. We're going to talk about it later. But essentially what happens is it takes the list work out. It takes the list work out. Why is NCR three uh, NCR two equal to three? Because there are three ways to combine things two at a time from a group of three. There are th there are three ways to combine things two at a time from a group of three. So there are three ways to make two of the shots out of three. Three different ways when that when that order is significant. A common example we used with NCR last year was, what if, how many three-person teams could I make out of this class? Well, if we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven people today, how many three-person, different three-person, or sorry, how many three-person teams could I make out of this class? I can do 11 C3. There are 165 different ways to do this. Again, there are mathematics behind this. There's factorials. We're going to talk about that. But today, what, what I want to focus on is, this formula didn't come from nowhere. Notice a couple of things. This just represents this number here that you already came up with yourself. There are three ways to do that. Well, when the numbers get big, you can use combinatorics. Where did this number come from, the 0.72? That's our free throw percentage. That's our favorable probability, what we want. And so together, so what is this one? Which another way to say that in general for probability would be the complement. So what should these two always add up to? One. one. And then the one of the top should always be three. The top numbers should together add up to the total number of trials that are happening. What if this was five shots? You couldn't get a five shot. Like there's no five point shot. But if I was calculating a five shot sequence, the two top numbers would be five. So this formula is composed of pieces that you know where they come from. It's just like you see this and it's like, oh, what? Pull out your formula sheet. You need them? Here. Let me, let me pass these back out to you. Check out your formula sheet. See what you got there. Uh, yes. If you need it, take it. If you don't have one, take it. What do you see when you look at this sheet? Flip the page. Do you see this formula? Yes. How do they list it? Oh, they do like the parentheses version. They do. So they do the parentheses version. So N over K. N over K is another way to say NCK. The problem is on your formula sheet, they don't give you any context. They don't tell you when to use this. That's kind of like upper level mathematics. Here, have the formulas. I mean, you know, you don't know when to use them, but have the formulas, right? So you've got it there. So some things you need to remember is two top, and, and look, K plus N minus K would be equal to what? N should be equal to N, which is your total. So the formula adds up to itself, to what it should add up to. Can we write that in here? Uh, you can, because I'm going to be giving you a formula sheet for any assessments. You sort of, you sort of with me on that? Let's do a little bit of practicing here down below. Let's fill out this chart. Underneath the Memphis Grizzlies logo, you see the 73. The two subsequent boxes, you should put 74 in. So their score is then going to be 74 and 74. What, I, what I'd like for you to calculate is the probability of a Memphis win, the probability of a Memphis loss, and a probability of overtime for each of the given scenarios. 
the basketballs remember uh, the basketballs represent how many shots they have left. So in the first row, it's three shots left. Second row is two shots left. Last row is one shot left. So are these like imaginary games, like separate from? Yes. So this is separate from what we just did. This is like the coach thinking to himself, okay. Should we foul in the situation? Okay, uh, when it's 75 to 73, we have three shots left. Not that they're sitting there doing this math in their head, but, they're, but they kind of are, right? And they're going, okay, what's the probability of a win here? So are you still using the same parameters? Same parameters, okay. yes. <laughs> let's chat about this. I don't understand. I actually do. So let's chat about this first line here. It's kind of a compilation of the first uh, of the first boxes. <laughs> think of it like anyway. So let's think about it like this: the probability. So if it's seventy-five to seventy-three, they're down by two. They have three shots left. What's the probability of a win? To win, and this is where I was talking about putting yourself in that actual scenario. What would it mean to win? To win would be to make all three. To make all three, I'd have to make, make, make. 0 0.72, 0 0.72, 0 0.72, which would be 0.373, a series of events. The probability of a Memphis loss, I'm pulling from above. What would it mean for them to lose? Either they would miss all three, so 0.28 times 0.28 times 0.28, just right here, or, which means add, they could miss, miss, make or miss, make, miss, or make, miss, miss. This 0.169 came from, do we dare? Let's try it. The 0.169 came from 3C2, and what would have to happen two of those times? What goes here? This would be the 0.28. Oh, sorry. Squared times 0.72 once. Does that make sense? Now, I'm, I'm not trying to confuse you. Is there another way to write it? Ah. Uh -huh. So 3C1, 3C1, what would our formula look like? 0.72 for the first. Times 0 0.28 for the second. I, I, I think this should be. Do you, do you get the same answer? No. No. I got point. It's, it's literally nine. either way you're multiplying. Oh, no, wait, never mind. There should be I don't, I don't because one of the, the C's what matters. That's the same thing. But, Wait, no, yeah. that's what 3C1 Try it. No, what is it going to multiply by 3? What is it going to multiply Do it. Do 3C1 in your calculator. I did that, but why doesn't it, why isn't it 1 minus point two eight? I want you. I want you to see how this formula. So Leon's like, I don't understand. So this is this is a great spot to be. This is the productive struggle. If I have three things, make so three shots. Make 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 miss. Uh, sorry. Make make miss. Make right here. What? Uh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So right here, this is. Three of them, three C three, right? How many are so? If if I'm talking about the favorable event, three C three, three makes. This chunk here would be three C two. Then I could do make miss 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 make. Just stay with me, okay? Stay with me. Wait a minute. Hold on. Just, just wait a second. Wait a second. The mathematics of C, of NCR, says how many ways are there for it to happen? So you tell me. 3C3, how many ways are there to choose a group of three from three things? How many ways can I choose a group of three from these three people? One. Just one. It's one group. If I have these three people, though, how many ways are there for me to choose the two of them? Well, I can pick these two, 
these two, or these two. There's three ways. How many ways are there for me to pick just one of them? Well, there, or there, or there. How could this be? How could it possibly be that both of them are three? Well, honestly, the formula just matches the reality. 3C2 is three. There's only three ways to pick two. 3C1 is three. How could this be possible? Well, because there's only three ways to pick one person from a group of three. The formulas are different, but mathematically it's the same because it means pick one out of the three. Pick two out of three. How many ways are there to do it? So then what is 3C0? This is going to blow your mind. Zero? No. Three. One. There is one way to pick zero people. There's one, there's one way to pick zero people out of a group of three. That's to pick none of them. So watch. Are you ready? So it's 3C3, 1 Hold on. 12. Equals 1, equals 3, equals 3, equals 1. Do you remember last year when we did Pascal's triangle? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. There it is. 1, yeah. 1, 1. Okay? Yeah. So what's going to happen, what's going to happen as we get to the fourth level, right? Okay, we get to the fourth level, then it's 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. There's always going to be a symmetry. Now, that doesn't answer this question, so I just, I, did, I, I don't want to say I blew your minds. I don't want to say I blew your minds, but I threw this out there, and it was like, that is impossible. Well, think for a second. Here's what I did. I told you up above that when we have NCR, then we do the probability of the favorable event to the K. Then we do 1 minus the probability of the favorable event to the N minus K. What is the favorable event? Whatever you define it to be. Whatever I define it to be. So in this case, here's what I just did. I just said, well, I know to lose would be two misses. So 3C2 misses out of the three. So in this case, I just flip-flopped it, and I said, well, out of the three shots, two of them need to be misses. One of them needs to be a make. So why is it equal to, out of three shots, one of them is a make, and two of them are misses? Why is it the same? You didn't hear what I said. You were like, you're like spaced out. Let me say it one more time. It's, it's, it's all okay. it's it's the same. Same. Say it again. The, these two are the same situation. Out of the three shots, two of them are misses, and one of them is a make. Out of the three shots, one of them is a make, two of them are miss. It's like saying, what are the chances you win? Two are the chances you not lose? Yes. Yeah. It is. It is. So if, let's say I gave you um, a problem on an AP test, and they asked you something along these lines, and you show your work one of these two ways, and somebody's like, well, I showed different work, and I got the same answer. Okay. It's possible. Depending on how you define the events, how you put the point on <laughs> But what you need to keep straight is this part right here, this connection right here. The number of events that are favorable, you need to put that probability first. Now, mathematically, do you need to put it first? No, you could reverse these because of multiplication. But in your own mind, I would suggest saying, okay, if I need, if out of the three events, I need one of them to be a make, kind of keep it straight in your mind. Always, the exponents need to add up to the first number. Always, the probability needs to add up to one. These are called uh, binary events. It's either one thing or the other. There's only two options, one thing or the other. It's a make or a miss. The probabilities don't have to be equal. The probability should be the same in subsequent trials, meaning each time he shot that free throw, he was 0.72. It didn't change. But you really only have two choices, make or miss. Probability of make, probability of miss. Together, that's everything. There's no other possibility. There's no, well, the third option. There's only two options, binary. Let's jump down here. Let's say it's 75 to 74. How does Memphis, yeah. I don't understand why the formula changes. Like for, like I followed the NCR that formula. Yes. And so for the loss, I did three C one, and then times point seventy two the first. Yeah. Yeah, and then 
times 1 minus, I did the... 1 minus 0. 0.72. Well, why is it, because I thought E is probability of miss. It is. Wait. 1 minus 0. 0.72 is your probability of miss. Your probability of miss is 1 minus your probability of make. Oh, that whole what thing. What if you have like three, what if you have like more than two outcomes? No. No. Okay, you can't have that. But it wouldn't, uh, this is a different set. We're talking about binary situations because what we're talking about is, is binary distributions, meaning we are going to figure, like this formula is going to be one that we apply to situations, and we're going to talk about that. It's, it's a, another acronym, BINS, where we apply this formulaic thinking to probability. Does that apply to, like when we did the siblings thing, or how many siblings you have, da, 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 like, or wages? It's not the same thing because you have multiple outcomes. This is not a probability table. There's only two. This is only for two. Yes. So if I change that and then I do so, it's 0.72 to the first times 1 minus 0.72. To the second. Yeah. It should I be the same. I did that, but it's. Did you do 1 minus 0.72 in parentheses? Yeah, I just want to know. Okay, well, let me know. If you, if, let me know. We can talk about it. So let's just think about the situation real quick and just make sure we can apply it because we just did it with three. I want to make sure we can do it, do it again. Analyze the situation. It's 75 to 74. We have two shots left. How do they win? Make and make. Is there any other way to win? So how do I calculate probability of make, make? 0.72 squared or 2C2. How many ways are there to choose two people out of a group of two? How many ways are there for me to choose you two? Just one way. There's only one way. And that matches my thinking, right? How do I win? I gotta make both. Well, how many ways do I make both? Well, either I make both or no, that's it. That's the only way. 2C2, and you could do it like this: 0.72 squared times 0.28 as a note. Something to the zero power. Is it zero? One. No, it's one. So this would be our formula. How do they lose? They miss both. They miss both. To calculate missing both would be miss, then miss. 0.28 squared. 2C2, 0.28 squared, 0.720. Oh, let me put let me put a couple numbers on this. 0.5184 and then 0 0.0789. I apologize for the for cramming in there. How do they go into what? I just, what am I doing? <laughs> I don't even know. 0.5184.079. And by the way, when you add these three things up, what should you get? That's all the outcomes. There's no other outcome. Probability of overtime, what would that mean? One. They made one. Which one? Either, Either the first or the second. So I could 2C1.28 one. One. times the, or to the what power? 1, one times 0.28 to the 1. one. Seems unnecessary. Well, it's a reminder that both of the, in, the, out, the uh, exponents together need to add up to the number of shots. And for that, I get 0 0.4032. If it's 75 to 74, we have one shot left. That would be like, hey, they made the first one. No, sorry, they missed the first one. What's the probability that they win? Yeah, they can't win. You cannot win. The best you can do is tie. The probability of the loss would be they miss. So 0.28. The probability that they win would be, or sorry, that they go to overtime would be 0.72. So if Washington is a 40% free throw shooter, meaning when we started this whole mess and he goes up to shoot this three-pointer, should we foul if he's a 40% free throw shooter? Why not? <laughs> because it's, there's going to be a higher likelihood of him missing if it's not but, right. So. No, but even if he misses... You didn't go into overtime, you're going to miss. No, a 40. Oh, 40% free throws. Oh, never mind, never mind, never mind. What? what do you think? So we have to, like, I don't want to have to compare. So if, it's 50-50 if for them to win if he doesn't foul. 
But if he does file, then there's more chances. It's not that he's doing it for the What do we like add to find so the actual? So it's 40%? That's, that's the question. Or, but well, if, did a three well, if he makes answer. a three pointer, they win. If yeah. he doesn't, they lose. So that's 50 50 if he doesn't it's file. It's a 60% chance uh, that they'll win. Are you talking about losing? No, it's 60 40. Yeah, 60-40. Is that, it's so they the uh, So look right here. The probability of the win is... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 0.373? But that's at the 0.72. Okay. What's that? That's the point well, seven two. Yeah, but, but we're, what we're looking at is he goes up to shoot. There's a 40% chance that he makes it. So there's a 60% chance that he misses. So we need to weigh that 60-40 versus his free throw capabilities. I say you don't foul it. Smart throw. Because Smart if you, man, I'm if you put together the probability of the win and the probability of the overtime, it gives them like over a 60% a chance. Of, yeah. Um, yeah, so so maybe it is, but so. what's the risk of overtime? They might lose or they might win. They might lose. So the answer to this question would be, Maybe it's smart to foul them. There's no clear cut answer in this one. That's it. We did all that. So maybe justice. Like, is it injustice? The best I can do is maybe. If you like justify it well, what is it? That's right. How do you justify it? How do you justify it well? Yeah, can you justify it? So I would justify, I would say this. I would say something like this. Maybe the chance of losing in regulation goes down. However, overtime is, is another variable. What happened to burning the ships? That's <laughs> okay. You're not necessarily saying it's smart to foul, it's not smart to foul. You're just conceding the fact that, yes, it could be smart to foul because your chance of losing does go down. However, there's another step to it. <laughs> All right. I know. It doesn't seem like brain the shift. What's that? Maybe because what? Maybe because your chance of losing the regulation, so maybe. Your chance of losing in regulation goes down. But they may lose. Yes. I hate to like be okay, but technically. Oh, you don't hate it. You love it. Oh my god. Do you think Lewis, like, do you think the team that has Chevelle and Nasha, the the chance of winning for Matt for Lewisville going to decrease? Wasn't Lily just saying? Oh, Memphis. No, you're saying the chance for uh, Memphis to lose, not a chance for Lewisville to win. It's asking if there's. Why is Louisville to go? Not for Memphis. Louisville's up. Yes. Yeah, that's yes. what we're saying. Is it could be <laughs> smart for them to foul <laughs> if, like, they don't. But it could be. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay, but like, for real though, I really feel like there's a definite answer to this. If you just like add up. Yeah, I do too. I think the probability of them smart. winning or going into overtime is way higher it's than like, it's just it's like you're winning It's yeah. not like long to go. That's, that's why a maybe is an appropriate answer in this Oh, in this because, because the, you don't know the score of overtime. You don't know the score of overtime. So the, well, these are just probabilities. But if you don't do get too hung up on that part. That was a mode to teach this binomial setting. Okay, don't get too hung up on that. Uh, I know. Let's talk about the binomial setting for a minute. So binomial random variables. Here, here's the acronym for binomial setting. It's BINs. It's bins. The B stands for binary, Mean, meaning there's two outcomes. Win, loss, miss, make. Yes, no. Heads, tails. They've got to be independent events of one another. So the Probability didn't change in subsequent events. 
thinking about coin toss here. Our N is our number of trials is set. It's not an open-ended thing. In this case, we had three free throws we were dealing with, five tosses of a coin, things like that. That's the same probability. So we assumed for every free throw, there was that 72% likelihood of making it. When we talk about binomial probability, this is going to be that formula that we talked about. The probability of x equals k. Don't get too hung up on this, because we just talked about it. There's a lot of variables. NCR in your calculator, when we talk about it in statistics, we use the letter K. Because R is, we don't mix it up with R value. Can you always write one in Yes, I'm going to. Oh. So N was the number of trials. K, this is the word that we use, number of successes. P is our probability of success. That's what I was saying. When you look at that second, that K number, it should be associated with the probability that comes in that first spot. And then one minus P would be the probability of failure. So in our case, could be the prob if, we're, if we're looking at the number of makes, probability of make versus probability of miss. A couple of other notes. These must add to 1, uh, and n and k minus n, these must add to 1. All right. I'm sorry. What was the second? Does it just be for k and n minus 3? Does it just add to whole number or add to Sorry, they should add to n. Add to n. Yes. 